To God be the glory and praise, I would like to share to each and every one the two dreams that I had dated June 16 and June 28. It has something to do with President Trump and my dad. So the first part of the dream, I saw President Trump in a pier or a boat dock. And he was like stepping, going to step in the boat, but he is hesitant because he got no shoes or sandals on. And so I was telling him, come on, step in, you know, because everything's fine. And so that's how the dream ended. And then the second part, which is dated 628, uh, I saw I, as I was walking with my dad, I saw this guy who owned the shoe store and i believe that he is an angel getting some you know getting my dad to prepare him because he was like he owned the shoe store and then he i introduced him to my dad and then he just actually told my dad come on go with me because he's going to give my dad a new shoes and so i was just like okay that's perfect so they left because he's going to give my dad a new shoes so if you think about it brothers and sisters the first part of the dream President Trump is actually stepping on the boat with no shoes. And then after that, my dad was actually given a shoes to, to wear. What is this trying to tell us, brothers and sisters? Do you know, wearing of sandals and shoes in the Bible is very important. And the Bible speaks about it in so many times. And so what is this trying to tell us? Why is Trump having no sandals? Is there any in the Bible that do this too? There are several meaning of taking sandals off in the Bible. When God called Moses from the burning bush, the first thing God told him was to take his sandals off. In Exodus 3 verse 5, then he said, Do not come near here. Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And then also in Joshua 5 verse 15, the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Remove your sandals from your feet, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. Is this a sign that Trump is entering into a holy place? For what reason? To fulfill what I believe is to fulfill what is written about building of the third temple before the coming of the Lord. Or to prepare the people for what is soon to come. Why am I seeing Trump with no shoes and telling him to go into the boat? Brothers and sisters, when we go into the boat, it reminded me immediately about Noah. Remember, Noah was preparing the boat for a long time and telling people, you know, that there will be a, del you know, a deluge or a flood that's going to come. And then a lot of people are actually just ignoring and mocking him. But he built the boat for a long time. That is a sign that people should repent. If you look, brothers and sisters, nowadays, there's a lot of things that Trump has been doing to fix the country and make it great again. But a lot of people, I'm not talking about politics, but I guess it has something to do with politics here. And I'm just sharing my dream according to, to what I saw in my dream. Okay, so he's been doing a lot of things to, to do something for to make the the country great again and bear with me if you're not trump or if you're against trump or if you're pro trump just bear with me brothers and sisters it has a lot of significance for the soon coming of jesus christ when noah was building the the boat he's telling people to repent but people are mocking him during the time of Moses, in Exodus 3 verse 5, the Lord also told him to remove his shoes because he's entering into the presence of the Lord. And then during the time, Moses was showing a lot of wonders and signs in order for the Pharaoh to set the people go. And during the time of the apostles on the boat with Jesus, remember, they also stepped into the boat. For what reason? Remember, Jesus brought them into the, the, the river or the sea of Galilee, I guess. And then, suddenly, there's a big storm that came. Storm. Storm represents trials, tribulations, and problem, right? Spiritually, you can see the literal storm. There will be flood, there, the, which is happening right now. Volcanic eruption, flood, troubles, different kinds of troubles, earthquake. 
uh, opening of the land, just like what the Lord's been showing and telling people to repent. But what happened when the apostles went in there? The Lord Jesus is trying to show the apostles and show us that whatever trouble and tribulation that's going to come, even Jesus is sleeping. We're not supposed to worry. We need to trust in Him. And that's what Jesus is trying to tell each and every one of us. And so, during the time, and after that, okay, what is the importance of this? In 2 Samuel 15 verse 30, And David went into the ascent of the Mount of Olives, and wept as he went, and his head was covered, and he walked barefoot. Then all of the people who were with him, each covered his head and went up weeping as they went. Another meaning of removing the sandals and shoes is actually lamentation, repentance. And I guess we don't know, I don't know what's going on with the mind of Trump, but probably this is just like the Lord's trying to tell us. When a kingdom, just like Job, going to that place and telling them to repent or else they will be punished, the island, the king on that island immediately used, um, uh, changed his clothes and wear the sackcloth and repented. If the king in the country repent, the Lord is going to spare the country from the soon coming wrath. I guess is this also a sign that it's showing that Trump is repenting? That's why he, you know, he took off his shoes and is going to step in the, the presence of the Lord to tell the people in America and all those presidents in different parts of the world. If they're going to humble their self, themselves up by taking their shoes off, repenting from their sins, they will be spared from the wrath that is going to fall on their country. In Isaiah 20 verse 2 verse 2 to 3, at that time the Lord spoke through Isaiah the son of Amos saying, Go and loosen the sackcloth from your hips and take your shoes off your feet. And he did so, going naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Even as my servant Isaiah has gone naked and barefoot, Three years as a sign and token against Egypt and Cush. Imagine that for three years he did that. The Levites whose function was to carry uh, their, the tassels of the tabernacle, the vessel of the tabernacle, were required to take off their shoes while performing their holy services. These are the different ways that they take their shoes off. Including the priest, when they perform their services, in the sanctuary and this is observed till this day that they are barefooted and the kinsman redeemer at the story of Ruth to perform the duty of such to a brother's widow under the book of Ruth verse 4 7 to 8 he also took his sandals off brothers and sisters during the time of Joshua the commander of the Lord's army told Joshua take your sandals off your foot this commander of the Lord's army was God. Joshua immediately fell on his face to the earth and worshipped. Moses had done the same thing at the burning bush. Both times God said, said the ground they were standing on, on became holy for his direct presence. And so they, were ta they have to take off their shoes. And I believe that Trump is going to step in the holy presence of God. And why will I say that? Because other people will say, oh, he got different religion and everything. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. Listen to this. Do you know that the, in Israeli news, they compare Trump to King Cyrus? And who is this King Cyrus? King Cyrus is the king who allowed the Jews to return to Jerusalem and built, built the second temple. It was Cyrus the Great. He lived until he was 70 years old. Donald Trump got elected on the platform of Let's Make America Great Again. This is under the Israeli news live. Okay, news. I actually uh, research it. Trump took office at the age of 70. Okay, this is in the Israeli news, July 13, 2018. Trump did his effort to fight abortion 
keep transgender kids out of the wrong bathrooms and fill the U.S. courts with die-hard conservative judges. Many believe that the role he's playing is a fulfillment of the divine prophecy has gotten him promoted to king for some of them on ancient Persian king to be per precise. So brothers and sisters, why are Isra Israelites or Jewish people comparing Trump to Trump uh, to King Cyrus? Do you know on my previous video I told you because I found it also in YouTube that the um, they actually made a coin which is a two-sided uh two uh a golden coin or you know a coin in israel that they put the picture of king cyrus and beside it is actually trump that they're comparing him to king cyrus so who is this king cyrus he is the heroic pagan ruler who liberated the jews from captivity in babylonia and brought them back to their homeland to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Since Cyrus is pagan, it has prophesied that, prophesied that he would bring down the Babylonian Empire, be the leader to facilitate the building of the second temple and restore Jerusalem to her former glory. These events came to pass after Cyrus conquered and ruled over ancient Babylon. Let's go forward. Could it be that Trump like Cyrus? Clearly, does not know the Lord in real and personal way, but could still be used by God to accomplish his purpose. Is Donald Trump a modern-day Cyrus? The article said Trump has a Cyrus-like quality. Trump actually quoted the ancient king in Mar March to mark the Persian New Year. As the White House statement read, Cyrus the Great, a leader of the ancient Persian empire famously said that freedom dignity and wealth together constitute the greatest happiness of humanity if you bequeath all three to your people their love for you will never die and that's what the quote of uh, the persian king but i truly believe in first timothy 6 verse 17 the lord said instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be conceited and not to put their hope in the uncertainty of wealth but in god who richly provide all things for us to enjoy a lot of people they rely on their faith that when you have the uh, money that they have the money they have the wealth they have the freedom and everything you know i think it um number one is really god in order for everything to be falling into place so why is the building of the temple so important what is the connection of cyrus and trump and the temple related the bible clearly teaches that a new temple which will be called the third temple will be built in the future the first temple was built by solomon and second by cyrus the third temple will exist during the great tribulation daniel refers to this temple when he says that the prince who is to come the antichrist will enter it and stop the sacrifice in the middle of the tribulation which is in daniel 9 verse 27 the apostle paul mentioned it when he declares that the man of lawlessness will profane the temple by entering it and declaring himself to be god which is written in second thessalonians 2 verse 3 to 4 the third temple is also mentioned in the book of Revelation when John is told to measure it, a symbolic way of telling him to assess its spiritual condition which is found in Revelation 11, 1-2. Brothers and sisters, it is very important. Everything will fall into place. The Lord is going to the Lord's words are going to pass. He said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. And so therefore it's going to pass, it's going to happen. If Trump is going to you uh be used by the Lord to build the third temple, and I know I had this dream June and I know I heard long time ago that they're already working on the third temple they're worrying about where it's going to be located brothers and sisters the lord showed me the measurement of the temple of the lord or the 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 kingdom of the lord that's going to come it's actually the whole entire israel and that made it as a square kind 
And that's how Jesus explained to me. I haven't went in there yet because I have to finish this as fast as I can before I go to that dream. And so brothers and sisters, we all know that the third temple is going to be built. And what's the important importance of that? If Trump is going to go in the boat, I believe that the Lord is going it's he's going to step in to the presence of the Lord. And the Lord's going to be directing him to do what is supposed to be done in order for the third temple to be built. And once it is built, the Antichrist is going to step in. The question is, who is the Antichrist? That will be on my first video, on my long time video before, I've seen Obama as going in. But brothers and sisters, in the entire history, there's different Antichrist that came in. We don't know who's going to be. Is there going to be another one that will step in? Or he's going to come back in order to, to reign again if Trump is going to step down or there will be an election? I don't know. I leave it in the Lord's hands. But I know for sure that the Antichrist will go in there. And once he steps in, and that's the time, the tribulation of the Christian, because I believe they're going to make a law that all the Christians are not supposed to be speaking about God. They're going to build uh, um, an idol that everybody should be required to do this. And if they don't, they're going to be beheaded. And that's how the two witnesses is going to appear. So this is what we're trying to tell. I'm trying to tell brothers and sisters. We have to remember when the temple is built, we need to be ready because tribulation is here. And that will be in the middle of tribulation under the words of Daniel 9 verse 27. He will confirm a covenant with many for one seven. In the middle of the seven, he will put an end to sacrifice and offering. And at the temple, he will set up an abomination that causes desolation until the end that is decreed is poured out on him. Once the Antichrist will step in there, He's going to declare uh, a law that everybody and even probably built. I really believe he's going to build a statue. Because in one of the dreams the Lord showed me, when he showed me about the beheading, people will be gathered in, the, in this room, different rooms, and then they will be brought, they will be brought into this room to bow down to this like statue where all there's like a spotlight of light pointing on it. You need to bow down on it. And if you don't, you're going to be beheaded. So I believe it's either uh, the face of the demon to bow down there or the face of this Antichrist that he's going to make a statue. Just like the time of, the, of Daniel wherein they built that big statue and everybody should bow down and not to pray. So anyway... The third temple will be destroyed at the second coming of Jesus. The great earthquake at that time will radically change the topography of Jerusalem and all the earth, which is written in Revelation 6 verse 12 to 17. So, what will that be? Why is that going to happen? I truly believe, how can God bring the, the new Jerusalem in Israel if there's a lot of building? So naturally, there will be a great earthquake to destroy everything in Jerusalem. That's why there will be war. It will be smashed. That's why Jesus said, no stones will be on top of the other. So that's why there will be there will be war in there there will be earthquake to really destroy and flatten the ground because when jesus comes he's going to bring the new jerusalem down there for us to all dwell his children and that's what i truly believe and the way i understand the way the lord uh, explained it to me so what would be the reason why the president is barefooted so moses Moses in the verse 34 I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt this is in Exodus I have heard this is probably one of the words that the Lord is going to speak you know this is one of the words that the Lord spoke to Moses I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt I have heard their groaning and have come down to set them free 
Now come, I will send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses they had rejected with the words, who made you ruler and judge. He was sent to be the ruler and the deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out of Egypt and performed wonders and signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the wilderness. Brothers and sisters, during the time of Moses, God gave them the law in order for them to follow. But right at this moment, brothers and sisters, the, our generation right now, have you ever seen how hard-headed the people are? How stubborn they are? How blind they are? How deaf they are? They know that Jesus is coming. The signs are, ju are just everywhere. Even Christians clearing, declaring themselves to be Christian, going to the church, they're even don't want to listen to the real truth they just want to hear what tickles their ear they proclaim that they love jesus but they dress like a prostitute going to their church they go to their church and then they're they're together with their uh with their husband or wife that they're both gays or lesbians or sometimes they have their and then they're still committing adultery and they're still sinning under in darkness and they still don't repent because they believe that once they're saved they're safe so they're still ha stubborn hard-headed and so what is going on right now we believe that the children of god are just like here building the the boat of noah right now telling them to prepare to prepare because the flood is coming god is going to flood the whole earth and if you will tell me he's not going to flood the whole earth yes he's not going to flood it the whole time at the same time but god told me fountains of water will come out to wash away the sins of the world haven't you noticed brothers and sisters in different parts of the world right now floods are just coming everywhere and then flooding the entire city just like the lord showed me people are stuck in their houses while they're sleeping they can go out because they're heavy because of too much debauchery that they can't go out and then the water is just running so hard higher than the house look at what's happening right now brothers and sisters it's actually so much that a lot of houses are even washed away why because jesus said if your house is not built on the rock when the water comes it will be washed away spiritually and literally who are living on those houses brothers and sisters trump is trying to run america right now just like what it used to be he wanted it just like what it used to be that's why he's saying he wants to make america great again but his people rejected him have you noticed that when he was he was elected people just rally and rally they don't want what he's doing they don't want the people to be great again they destroy the street they they do the they do all the things to destroy america for what reason brothers and sisters they are so deceived that they don't know how it will be when america is going to totally be destroyed they're just walking on the street destroying it and after that when it will totally be destroyed because the wrath of the lord is going to fall into the disobedient they will fully understand how it feels when they don't have electric, when they don't have a house, when they don't have food to eat, when they don't have microwave, when they don't have air condition and heater in the house. And these people will understand what is the outcome of their stubbornness. So, on verse 40, they told Aaron, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what had happened to him. That was the time they made an idol in the form of a calf. They brought 
sacrifices to it and revealed in what their own hands had made but God turned away from them and gave them over to the worship of the sun moon and stars this agrees with what is written in the book of the prophets brothers and sisters history repeats itself look at what's going on right now Trump is going back Trump is there to restore the the things that are being destroyed here in America. A lot of people are losing jobs. Uh, he wanted to have more jobs. He wanted to, to improve America. But the people rejected him, just like what had happened with Moses. They rejected him. Look at what happened, brothers and sisters. During the time of Noah, how many people went in the boat? Eight only family the holy family only family who love the lord the mother the father and the children the mother and the father the husband and the wife who were able to go into the boat and they were safe take note brothers and sisters only husband and wife mother and father what's going on with the world right now a lot of prophets, a lot of uh, ministers telling people, go back to the old ways. Repent from your heart. Because God told us, He created husband and wife. He created male and female. And that's the sacredness of the family. And Noah's time, only the family of Noah was saved. Noah, who is the father, the wife of Noah and their children with their wives and they were the only safe so do you think when another calamity that will happen when Jesus is going to come who is he going to save only the family that is composed of mother father and children who love the Lord who obeys the Lord, who accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, who actually are born again and also continue to fill themselves with the Spirit, with the words of God, and drink the bread of life, who is Jesus Christ, eat the bread of life, and drink the, the living water, who is Jesus Christ, and fill themselves with the Holy Spirit so they're able to, to bear fruits for the kingdom of God. Those are the people who walk righteously with the Lord, making sure that they walk in the narrow path, building themselves up, building each other up for the coming of the Lord, making sure that their dress are fine linen, which are their continuous service with the Lord, right? Bearing foods for the Spirit, and at the same time, making their clothes clean and pure, spotless, no wrinkle in the eyes of the Lord. So they don't sin. They will be blameless and holy in the eyes of God. So they will be the only one. We will be the only one with the grace and mercy of God to go into the boat. If we repent with all our heart, if you repent with all your heart and accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior and ask Him to forgive you so your sins will be washed away and be remembered no more be born again to receive the Holy Spirit and learn to know Jesus by reading his words and have a relationship with him brothers and sisters if you think and you have that fear with the Lord you're scared of his wrath continually seeking him with all your heart you will be safe but for those who are lukewarm for those who accepted the lord jesus but they're sleeping right now and still live in sinful life like the world they will be washed away what happened to noah they were just thinking it's not going to rain because during that time there's no rain and so when god told noah to close the boat what happened jesus said when he closed the door no one can open when he opens the door no one can close. So when Noah closed the door, did anyone able to open it? No. They were washed away. Same when Moses crossed the, the sea. When they crossed in, they were able to cross in because of the grace and mercy of God. 
Jesus or God the Father was able to separate the water and allow his children to go in and that's the power of the Lord even in the last days nothing is impossible with him that when people are going to chase you he's able to open the sea so that you can cross cross that sea so you can go to safety and when people are going to chase you they will be able to be washed away because god is going to close the water he's going to close the door and no one can open brothers and sisters however the most high did not live in houses made by human hands as the prophet says heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool what kind of house will you build for me says the lord or where will my resting place be has not my hand made all these things if earth is god's footstool and the antichrist will go in to the temple the third temple that they're going to build would god be pleased with it naturally no it is already written the antichrist will step in there and once he step in there god won't be pleased that's why he's going to destroy it why because he's going to clear it up so that finally he's going to bring his new jerusalem to stay there in israel uh, together with his children and we will all live there together forever with jesus christ and god the father for eternity praise be to god and no evil spirit will be in there only outside brothers and sisters if the antichrist will reveal himself as god persecutions of christians are coming jesus showed me the beheading last time and this will be we all know that there's beheading in different parts of the world but this will be a worldwide beheading because this antichrist is going to control all and they're already doing it they're already having one world government they're already the, the false prophet is already connecting the one world religion and once the time is already set up according to the time set by god once it's set up they will come up and rise into the power and they're going to gather the christians and this is the 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 climax you know, not actually climax there's a lot of climax in the bible story in the life that that we're actually going to to witness brothers and sisters this will be one of the climax that christians will be gathered the two witnesses will be there and now the children of god are actually empowered with the holy spirit speaking about the truth in youtube in different forms in street preaching whatever because the lord empowered them with the holy spirit to speak about the truth to tell the people repent with all their hearts before it's too late just like noah he's been telling the people there's going to be flood but what happened people will mock you persecute you until to the point that they're going to put you to prison and persecute you just like what jesus said because of his name why because they don't have god in them the presence of the lord is not in them they are totally deceived because they're deceived their eyes are blind they're living in darkness they're living with demons so they are controlled by the demon and what will happen they will go with the demon if they're not going to repent if they're not going to wake up brothers and sisters god said in exodus still verse 51 you stiff necked people your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised you are just like your ancestors you always resist the holy spirit was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute they even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one and now you have betrayed and murdered him you have you who have received the law that was given through angels but have not obeyed it brothers and sisters it happened during the time of moses they disobeyed and persecuted the prophets and the children of god it happened during the time of jesus that they even crucified jesus on the cross together with the apostles in this time it will also happen to the children of god including the two witnesses 
And what will happen, brothers and sisters? The Lord said, Blessed are you when people mock you and persecute you because of, of His name. Because great is your reward in heaven. Imagine great is your reward. Why? You will be exempted even with the second judgment, the second death. It means you have the 100% assurance that you will be in heaven for eternity with Jesus Christ. There will be first judgment, there's a second judgment. And the second judgment will be with, uh, you know, the uh, with the false prophets and the demon and also those who actually follow them will be in the pits of hell for eternity. And so, why is, why? did Trump take the sandals off or shoes off? It is also a sign, brothers and sisters, of lamentation, repenting from our sins. In Micah 1 verse 8, Because of this, I must lament and wail. I must go barefoot and naked. I must make a lament like the jackals and a mourning like the ostriches. In their time, they also repent with all their heart. They put ashes on their head. They put sackcloth and they take their shoes off. Because they're telling the Lord that they respect the presence of the Lord. They take their shoes off. And that's probably I understand. And you know when I was reading this uh, uh, commentary in, uh, in YouTube or uh, Google. They said that's why a lot of uh, Orient people when they go in the house. They took the shoes off. You notice when you marry Asian, Chinese, Korean, uh, Filipino, you ha when you go enter their house, <laughs> ask your wife, you're not allowed to bring your shoes inside the house. And now I understand, it's not just because you don't want to bring the dirt in, all the Filipinos, all the slippers and shoes should be outside the door should be outside the door but here in the u.s there's a lot of bugs and um, different kinds of what's this you have to put your i have a rack just close to my door where in uh you know that's where i put my uh excuse me my nose is just like something um that's where we put our shoes and sandals on i don't let i, I always tell my husband don't bring the shoes in and he's doing it and now i understand why because our house is our sacred place too this is where we we pray with the lord this is where we watch and listen to the words of god this is where we usually talk to our children it is our sacred home for our family this is where we eat just like where jesus too this is where uh, jesus actually stayed in the home to have their food together they pray together they read the bible together they you know they talk to each other they show love and uh you know healing all the things are happening inside the home and this is why the lord said the home is sacred this is why the lord said build your house on the rock that's why joshua also said for me and my household we will serve the lord and that's why the family should be a stronghold to build on the rock who is jesus christ and it should be under the you know the sanctity of the father the mother and the children the men and the women not men and men not women and women and so brothers and sisters uh, the lord is trying to tell our leaders and the kingdom whatever kingdom the presidents the whatever the king the kingdom to repent or they will be judged Moses was instructed by God to prepare its people to enter into the promised land. The Lord is preparing us for His coming kingdom. We need to obey or be destroyed. Those who obey will enter the promised land. Moses was not able to go in the past. He, was full. he will fulfill it this time with the children of God in our generation. Why did I say this? Because the Lord mentioned it in the Bible. You know, Moses will come back with, as the two witnesses. Uh, you know, people were saying it will be just like the time. And I believe it was Moses and uh, Elijah who is, there. it will be like two person. But they have the spirit of Moses 
and the other one Moses who will be doing all the miracles also and bringing the people to the promised land and then Elijah who is or John the Baptist who are telling the people to prepare the way because Jesus is coming but he is also the Elijah this he he has the spirit of Elijah he has the power of Elijah who will perform miracles also in these last days so brothers and sisters expect we will also expect in our time the plagues the famine the turning of blood and pass over chasing on the sea with the pharaoh i believe the dna of the pharaoh also of egypt is already with the antichrist because that's probably why the reason they mummify him why because they believe that he will soon rise up and come back and so I believe that his DNA was placed with somebody, mixed them. That's why he got the spirit of the Pharaoh too. And this will be another fight between the Pharaoh and Moses. And before, you know, Pharaoh regretted that he let them go. This time he's going to really just hold the children and kill them. And Moses is going to be there to really perform until the end. And so Joshua represents us to put the full armor of god he is the mighty warrior of the lord this shows why a man i believe is the commander of the angel that gave my dad in and to give him the shoes shoes to be used for battle in these last days so brothers and sisters why will this man give my dad a shoes in isaiah 9 the people make walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Median defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior both used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning will be fuel for the fire for to us a child is born to us a sign is given and the government will be on his shoulder and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on and forever. The seal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Praise and glory be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is just trying to tell us, children of God, to remove our sandals because we're going in to the, pro the presence of the Lord. He's going to give us instruction on how to prepare ourselves to be fully prepared in the soon coming battle. Brothers and sisters, those who truly follow the Lord, we are the saints of God. I truly believe that the Lord has His saints in heaven. And I believe that there's also saints alive here on earth that will be joining the battle with the lord who will be performing the mighty signs in these last days and this is probably why the lord showed me also that he will bring people in heaven just like what i had in my dream and they're given the full warrior the and that's also the dream of my daughter they will be given a sword we will be using the boots whatever the full armor of god and so i believe excuse me that the people who are still alive and the saints here on earth we will be given the full armor of god also to be fighting in this battle not just the literal probably also the sp spiritual and literal armor of god and so why will this man oh, okay let's proceed so why go in the boat on noah's time people are warned for the coming flood people mock and don't listen only few did God appointed Cyrus for a reason, I believe. He can use people as instrument to do this, just like I was saying earlier. And so, we have to remember, when the temple is built, we have to be ready. 
if Cyrus was appointed by God and God told him these following words in the book of Isaiah, will this also be the words that God is going to tell, to tell Trump? Because he's going to enter into the presence of the Lord. Listen to this book of Isaiah 45. Cyrus is my anointing, anointed king. I take hold of his right hand. I give him the power to bring nations under his control. I help him strip kings of their power to go to war against him. I break city, na city gates open so... I break city gates open so he can go through them. I say to him, I will march out ahead of you. I will make the mountains level. I will break down bronze gates. I will cut through their heavy iron barns. I will bars. I will give you treasures that are hidden away. I will give you riches that are stored up in secret places. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I am the God of Israel. I am sending you for you by name. Cyrus, I am sending for you by name. I am doing it for the good of the family of Jacob. They are my servant. I am doing it for Israel. They are my chosen people. You do not know anything about me, but I am giving you a title of honor. I am the Lord. There is no other Lord. I am the one and only God. You do not know anything about me, but I will make you strong. Then people will know there is no God but me. Everyone from where the sun rises in the east to where it sets in the west will know it. I am the Lord. There is no other God. I cause light to shine. I also created, create darkness. I bring good times. I also create hard times. I do all these things. I am the Lord. Rain down my godliness, you heavens above. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide to receive it. This is the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is just trying to tell us. There's a continuation. I'm sorry. Let the freedom spring to life. Let godliness grow richly along with it. I have created all these things. I am the Lord. How terrible it will be for anyone who argues with their maker. They are like a broken pieces of pottery lying on the ground. Does clay say to a potter, what are you making? Does a pot say, the potter doesn't have any skill. How terrible it will be for anyone who says to a father, why did you give me life? How terrible for anyone who says to a mother, why have you brought me into this world? The Lord is the Holy One of Israel. He made them. He says to them, Are you asking me about what will happen to my children? Are you telling me what I should do with what my hands have made? I made the earth. I created human beings to live there. My own hands spread out the heavens. I put all the stars in their places. I will stir up Cyrus and help him win his battles. I will make all his road straight brothers and sisters praise be to god i believe that the lord is going to use trump to really straighten the path in order for the jerusalem to be built and the lord will guide him he will i believe he will build the rebuild the jerusalem my oh this is what the lord even said to cyrus he will rebuild Jerusalem. My people have been taken away from their country, but he will set them free. I will not pay him to do it. He will not receive a reward for it, says the Lord who rules over all. The Lord says to the people of Jerusalem, you will get everything Egypt produces. You will receive everything the people of Cush and the tall Sabaeans get in trade. All of it will belong to you, and all these people will walk behind you as slaves. They will be put in chains and come over to you. They will bow down to you. They will admit God is with you. There is no other God. You are a God who has been hiding yourself. You are the God of Israel. You save us. All those who make statues of God, statue, statues of God will be put to shame. 
they will be dishonored they will be led away in shame together but the lord will save israel he will save them forever they will never be put to shame or dishonored that will be true for all time to come the lord created the heavens he is god he formed the earth and made it he set it firmly in place he didn't create it to be empty instead he formed it for people to live on he says i am the lord there is no other lord i have not spoken in secret i have not spoken from a dark place i have not said to jacob's people it is useless to look for me i am the lord always speak the truth i always say what is right come together you people of the nations who escaped from babylon gather together and come into court only people who do not know anything would carry around gods that are made out of wood they pray to false gods that cannot save them tell me what will happen state your case talk it over together who spoke long ago about what would happen who said it long time ago i did i am the lord i am the one and only god i always do what is right i am the one who saves there is no god but me all you who live anywhere on earth turn to me and be saved i am god there is no other god i have made a promise in my own name i have spoken with complete honesty i will not take back a single word i said everyone will kneel down to me everyone's mouth will make promises in my name they will say the lord is the only one who can save us only he can make us strong all those who have been angry with the lord will come to him and they will be put to shame but the lord will save all the people of israel and so they will boast about the lord this is the word of the lord praise be to god brothers and sisters the lord is speaking to us right now he is sending cyrus before to actually save his people for those who follow him they will be taken good care and they will be protected the lord is going to rebuild the, the temple and since the third temple is going to be expected to be rebuilt the people will actually israel and all the children of god will rejoice in the prosperity and blessing of the lord but once the antichrist step in and defile the third temple the lord is going to give his wrath because he will be angry with the antichrist for defiling that place it's going to be destroyed so brothers and sisters moses was called by god he was told to take his sandals off to receive instruction he is used by god to set people free from the bondage of slavery and from the bondage of pharaoh he was commanded by god to follow god so they will live if they disobey they will die during this journey while they were walking there were actually 10 plagues that happened during that time in order for them to be set free just like what the bible said in revelation there will be different vials and bowl of pestilence that's going to be poured upon the earth just like what happened during the time of moses the nile river will be turning into blood and we all know brothers and sisters it's happening right now it's turning into blood in the lake river and ocean there will be plague of frogs have you known that there's rain of frogs in different places also go to youtube there will be plague of lice and there's a lot right now people are having a lot of lice even the dogs but that will be so much more and now it's making me <laughs> oh i don't have that lord praise be to you there will be the plague of flies and pestilence that kills cattle and sheep and we all know there's a lot of cattle and sheep dying everywhere animals just falling down plagues of boils and blains sores and painful skin infections and um that will probably soon to come because that will be the next video that we're going to perform we're going to to read brothers and sisters the way the lord is going to show me there will be the plague of locusts which is in hebrew arbe 
and then there will be a plague of darkness the locusts that will be going around to to inflict um, illnesses to people what did i saw during the time when i had a dream with obama not locusts but i've seen mosquitoes mosquitoes that i go that oh my goodness it's so dark because of the mosquitoes and i can't remember the other insects that i've been seeing brothers and sisters right now there's a lot of illness and the lord led me to see this video you know it's it just passed through but the lord allowed me to see it it's actually in another country a lot of people children right now are like disabled because they were beaten by a certain kind of mosquito we all know a lot of people are saying this is man-made to eliminate people but we all know things are going to happen just like what it is written for those who don't follow the lord they will be affected the children of God will also be, but it is intended for the performance that God will be glorified. So just like the prisoning and then the beheading that will be shown in the last days. And then there will be the plague of darkness wherein total darkness will happen. And that's why we're saying there will be electric grid because probably there will be earthquake, whatever. And now they're slowly destroying different parts of the world, right? And it's already flood and everything. The road is already broken. Electric wirings are already... It's going to be worsening and worse as the day pass by. Because it's going to be total darkness after that when they're going to shut it off because of meteors that's going to fall, whatever the Lord's going to drop or allow to happen. And then the last one will be the death of the firstborn man and beast. And just like what happened in Moses, the firstborn died. So under Joshua, they, because Moses didn't go, he didn't finish the work, Joshua continued the unfinished work of Moses. He took his sandals off also. He listened to God's instruction, fought war against the enemy, captured the land, and get the promised land. This is the reason why I'm seeing my dad. He will be given the sandals of peace. Brothers and sisters, all the children of God will be given the full armor of God and sandals of peace. The Lord is preparing us for the mighty battle in these last days. It will be a spiritual and I believe it will also be a literal battle. Excuse me. And, and so in order for it to be perfect, Moses is coming back in the last days to finish the task given to him. This time for victory to possess the land God promised as inheritance to his people. So what is the role of Trump then? He will be, uh, he will be used by God to assist build the temple and other instructions God will put in his heart. When temple will be rebuilt, just like what I said, the Antichrist will go in there. And like Moses and Aaron in the right... Um, they will persecute the Christians. Two witnesses will also rise up. Like Moses and Aaron in the old times, let the people go. Antichrist will not let them go. They will kill them and all the children of God. So three days, they will rejoice because all the children of God together with the witnesses will be dead. Few remnant will be alive to see the resurrection of the dead and will be seen with all their eyes as jesus resurrected from the dead people who killed him don't believe that he resurrected because they didn't see and hide the truth so this time because he was taken there and they make lies this time the lord is going to show his magnificent power and the truth of his resurrection that is he's able to give us new life and he's able to change our body into a new glorified body during his time people don't believe they actually changed the story this time they're going to let all the christians die or lay down on the street and they're going to have festival and they're going to lay down also the two witnesses for all the eyes to see all over the world why will it happen because this time they can't lie the lord is going to show his magnificent power to raise them up from the dead all of us from the dead 
raised us up and bring us back to life take it with take us with him in the sky and this time all the eyes can see and they can deny and they can't lie so brothers and sisters this is why god instructed joshua to put on put this in his mouth day and night joshua 1 you know 1 verse 1 uh, joshua 1 verse 9 the lord wants us to be the warriors and he wants he instructed this to joshua and he is instructing this to all of us brothers and sisters listen to this therefore this book of instruction must not depart from your mouth you are to recite it day and night so that you may carefully observe everything written in it for then you will prosper and succeed in all you do have i not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the lord your god will be with you wherever you go brothers and sisters the lord is trying to remind us wherever we go the lord is with us so don't be scared don't be discouraged but be strong and courageous in these last days because the lord said be firm until the end right he also said in isaiah fear not for i am with you so we always have to understand that and believe that put that in our mind and confess that in our mouth constantly that's the reason why he spoke about fear not in the book of the bible in the bible 365 times once a day for the whole year to remind each and every one of us to say that every day because jesus god is with us and no one can harm us so brothers and sisters in joshua 10 verse 8 the lord said the lord also tell joshua in joshua 10 verse 8 the lord said to joshua do not be afraid of them for i have given them into your hand not one of them shall stand against you praise be to god no one can stand against us that's the word of the lord so brothers and sisters put the full armor of god in these last days always be ready because the enemy is a roaring lion looking for anyone to devour to kill to steal and destroy and he wants the children of god to be destroyed and we won't let that happen because the lord said no one can take us away from his hand so brothers and sisters the lord loves us so much that he died for us and he is preparing his remnant his children in these last days all we have to, to remember to stay in love with him to continually walk in righteousness in the narrow path with the lord always putting the full armor of god and if you remember uh, the full armor of god prayer of rest a while i have to memorize that too always remember that and speak that because we need to put the full armor of god constantly ready in this final battle brothers and sisters the lord loves us and always remember that so jesus loves us so much that's why he died on the cross for our sins so i give the glory and praise to god the father and let's pray for our president to continually win this battle and to those who are disobedient pray for them and let the lord deal with them and for the children of god continue to be in repentance seek the lord with all your body mind heart and soul learn to love him and have a continuous um, relationship with jesus christ and brothers and sisters he will never forsake us he will never leave us because he loves us so may the lord bless you and keep you and shine his face upon you and give you love peace and joy in these final days in jesus yeshua's name amen and amen